In lesson two, we talked about the idea of density as being that relationship between the mass and the volume of an object. And then we talked about buoyancy being an object's ability to float on a liquid or a gas if it's less dense than the liquid or gas. And we're going to look at a little activity today that you can do on your own at home that deals with these ideas of density and buoyancy. And for this, you don't need too much to do it with. You need a piece of aluminum foil. And I've torn about a 12, 13 inch square of aluminum foil here. And then you'll need some weights. I'm going to use marbles for mine, but you could use pennies or marbles or anything really that has just a little bit of mass to it that you could add to the boat that we make. Because we're actually in this activity going to be building a boat out of aluminum foil. And the goal of this project is to build the boat that is most buoyant. That means the boat that can float the most mass on top of our water. And I've got a tub of water back here that we'll get up in a minute to test our boat out. So I'm going to show you a couple different boat designs that you might could make, and we'll compare how they do as far as their buoyancy as we add more weight to them. And then you can try to build your own at home and see how much mass you can get your boat to support, how buoyant you can make your boat so that it's able to float the most mass in your water. Now I've made two very simple boat designs here. Um, one's a larger rectangular one, one's more of a smaller square. But we're going to test these out and we're going to look at some issues that we might run into in our boat design and we're going to look at some things to consider in order to build the most effective boat possible using the same amount of material. And with this activity, our idea of an effective boat is not necessarily the one that looks the best, it's not the one that's the biggest or the smallest, but it's the boat that will hold the most mass, the boat that I can put the most marbles into before it sinks. Now in order to test my boats, I've just got a container that I've put a little bit of water in, and we can set the boat in the container, and you can see, of course, with no extra weight in the boat, the boat's able to float. But we also know that if the boat were to get down low enough in the water that the water could come up over the edge, it would cause the boat to sink. So we're going to start adding some weights to the boats and just see how much they can hold compared to one another. This is a smaller square shaped boat here and I'm just going to start adding marbles in. I'm going to do five at a time to start out. But you can see as soon as I start adding marbles the boat's kind of tipping a little bit. We want to make sure that weight's distributed evenly because if we get all the weight on one side it would cause the boat to capsize. But we're up to 15 marbles. 20 marbles, and you see already that boat's sitting much, much lower in the water than it was before. Here's 25 marbles. Whoops, dropped one. There's 25 marbles, but you see after adding 25, water's starting to come into the boat, and once the boat fills with water, it's going to sink. It's now more dense than the water, so it's no longer buoyant in the water. One question I'm asked a lot in class is, how are large boats like cruise ships, aircraft carriers, able to float when they weigh as much as they do. And again, it comes down to this idea of not mass, but density. Because when we think about our boats that we're making, yes, the boats are made out of aluminum, and we saw earlier how a piece of aluminum can sink in water. Most of this boat, if we look at the whole boat and its density, most of this boat's full of air right now. Now as I add more marbles, the boat becomes more dense and it gets to the point where it's more dense than water. But the boat itself is able to float because as a whole, it is buoyant due to the fact it's less dense than the water. Now we're going to look at our second boat design and it's quite a bit larger. So we're going to see if the size of the boat makes a difference. Now again, we use the same size piece of aluminum foil to make the boat. I didn't use a bigger piece for this boat. I just made the walls of the boat thinner and made a bigger surface area for it to take up on the water. So the last one sunk when we put 25 marbles in. So let's see how this one does. We'll start out with five at a time again. There's 10, 15, 20, and 25. And if you notice, now that we've got 25 marbles in this boat, the same amount that sunk the other boat, not only is this boat not sinking yet, but it's actually really not sitting that much lower in the water. Because again, when we think about how spread out that mass is across a bigger area of water, that means it's less dense. Just like the balls of aluminum foil that we looked at in the lesson, when the ball was packed together tightly, it was dense enough to sink. When it was packed together loosely, 
it was buoyant enough to float. And it's the same concept with the boat. The larger we make our boat, it seems, the more buoyant it becomes because it's spreading that mass of the boat, the same mass here that sunk the other boat, across a larger area of water. Now we're just going to keep adding marbles to this just to see how many marbles this second boat that we made can hold. Now at this point, if you can see down inside here, I've added 100 marbles to our boat now, which is four times what it took to sink the first one. And you can see now the boat's sitting much lower in the water. The high sides are helping it out to keep water from flowing in. And it's also kind of buckled up a little bit in the middle, which that could be a problem if we get too much of the mass in one spot. It could kind of fold in on itself. So as we add these marbles to the bottom of the boat, we want to distribute them and spread them out as much as we can, again, to balance that mass out over the whole bottom of the boat. Now at this point, I'm up to 125 marbles. The boat's starting to fold in some more. It's sitting even lower in the water, but it is still floating. That's 130. And we're just going to keep adding. I think we've got enough marbles here that our boat's probably going to sink before we get done. That's 135. And the water's very close to coming in on one side over here. That's 140. And here's 145. But as I add those, you see the water pouring into the boat. And finally, the second boat is sunk. But again, it shows what that principle of density can do for us in the engineering process as we're designing things like this boat. Using the same materials, we were able to design a boat that was five or six times more effective than our first model just by making it more buoyant, by making the overall density of the boat lower so that it was able to float for longer while it was supporting more mass than the previous boat. And again, this is a great activity to try at home. Uh, maybe you can have a little competition at your own house. We usually do one in the classroom each year to see who can build the boat to hold the most mass. And you could try that at home as well. Uh, build the different boats and let's just see which one is the most effective, which one is the most buoyant, which one can support the most mass. Good luck on your boats and I will see you in our next lesson as we talk about other properties of matter.